So let's take this to the, you know, where when we wanted to talk this last time we were on the show, and we, we talked so long about something else, we never got to the financial transactions tax. And obviously during the congressional hearings on GME, it got brought up multiple times. I mean, you get, you know, people who don't understand market plumbing that, you know, think, okay, and, and Andrew Ross Sorkin has been tooting the horn on CNBC saying, we need to curb speculation. Let's bring in a financial transaction tax and curb the speculation. You know, if you don't understand market plumbing, that's, you know, I, I can see where you get that thought process what is your thoughts here on one you know the potential for financial transaction tax and two what that what would that do to the markets yeah let's let, let's talk about it a little bit um so first of all it's important to understand what the proponents you know what what reasons are they giving for a financial transaction tax and there's really two reasons that they talk about one is obviously to raise money uh you know bernie sanders for his tax that he proposed i'll talk about it in a minute estimated that it could raise $3 trillion over 10 years. Uh, people who have actually looked at it say it's probably more like 10% of that. But, but you know, Bernie and people like that say, well, it's just a small tax, but it, you know, it could fund free college education or Medicare for all, reduce wealth inequality, you know, whatever. And, and listen, those may or may not be good policy goals, depending on your politics. But what's clear is that funding them through a financial transaction tax is a bad idea. The second thing that they talk about, and the reason for it, is to, and this is, this is more interesting, especially in terms of what's happening with GameStop, it's to stop or slow down excess trading by ma making it less profitable. And it's an interesting point because it, it, it sort of implies that there's a significant amount of excess trading that needs to be stopped. So, uh, you know, if I ask everyone on here, you know, do you think you trade too much? You know, do you trade so much that you need a tax to save you from yourself? I think most people would say no, but there's a group of professors who uh, they are at a UMass and Yale mostly, and, and they've concluded that most people and in institutions do trade too much and that a tax would be beneficial uh, by stopping. So the original, target of the financial transaction tax, this is going back six, seven, eight years now, uh, was uh, high frequency trading. And, you know, because at that time, you know, the book Flash Boys had come out and, and, you know, people were saying, oh, we have to get a range around, you know, high frequency trading. But then as people looked at it, they realized that would mostly be a tax on market makers. So fast forward to today, we have the Wall Street Bank spread. And a lot of people are pointing at them as the perfect example of what happens if it's too easy to trade. And if you watch the House Financial Services Committee meeting uh, about GameStop last week, you heard several Congress people asking if the financial transaction tax would have prevented that trading. And that was even before what happened yesterday. So the, the, the other thing to keep in mind and really important is that even if somehow the Congress devised a tax to sort of slow down Wall Street debts, it would actually apply to all investors, everyone watching today. And by the way, the other thing to keep in mind is not only are you paying a tax, whether you make or lose money, doesn't matter, but, yeah. but in effect, you're also paying that tax on top of your, your gains taxes, your income taxes and, and whatever yeah. else. So anyway. Yeah. Um, scared me, Bill. You're scared I mean, just me, Bill. Just to give some perspective, you know, on how big this tax is, they say 0.1%. Oh, what's that? It's not much. The current, we kind of do have a little bit of a financial transaction tax is that we have a sale um, uh, on when you sell a stock, the SEC fees we have. And what those SEC fees were last year were $22.10 per million. They actually lowered it this year. I believe it's down to just over $5 per million. Well, if you take 0.1% times a million, it's $1,000 per million. So that's increasing the SEC fees by 200 times, 200 times. So you think you just take your, you know, look at what, how much volume you trade last year, take your amount, multiply it times 0.1%, and that's going to give you the tax that you would own. Mine would be a scary number. I would be changing all of my strategies, and I would become a long-term swing trader. Um, but, you know, even at that, you're still getting hit. You know, you're still going to be one. Especially if they don't give a market maker exemption, you're going to see wider spreads. If they give a market maker exemption, well, then it's only Main Street playing. So, I mean, I'm not sure who they're trying to tax here. Like, I mean, you know, because you had one, one, somebody in the hearing saying, oh, well, they have this in Hong Kong. They don't have a problem. But they have a, they have a market maker exemption in Hong Kong. They have a market maker exemption in France. Don't you think, Bill, that they would give a market maker exemption in the U.S. if this happened? Oh, if absolutely. They put the financial 
Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. There, there have already been uh, talks about this, about carving out market making and so on. As And in my opinion, that's reasonable because market yeah. makers. Are, so the, the interesting thing is that people assume that if there's a tax, that market makers would pay it, it assuming that they're not exempt. But the fact is, it, the transaction is going to become a lot like if you go to buy a car. When you go to buy a car, the car dealer collects the tax from you and then turns it over to the government. But you're the one paying the tax. The way the market makers are going to are going to basically pass the tax on to you is in the form of wider spread. So you know, and 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 so the FDT is actually, if you think about it, two taxes. Not only do you have the actual tax paid on sales, but there's going to be this hidden portion of it that's buried in spread. And as a matter of fact, in Canada in 2012, they they instituted uh, sort of an FTT. It was based on messages and so on. But but immediately, like on the day they did it. Spreads increased by nine percent, which was actually a lot more than the amount of the uh, the fees that they put on. So, so I actually think that could really happen here, and that could be really dangerous. What do you but, think the chances are that something like this gets put through? Do you think this is like it's it's obviously been proposed for a decade? You know, like you were saying back in Flash Boys days, we were hearing about it. I was hearing about this back in two thousand and nine. So we're twelve years later; it still hasn't happened. I mean, but now you get you know some. Uh, obviously with this GameStop stuff, it's going to get brought up again here. Do you think this is a high probability, low probability? Just, you know, you don't have to you know, give a, give us a number, but, you know, ballpark, do you think this has a chance of getting put through? I do. Um, I, I think it's still going to be a, a rough slog, but look, you know, until COVID, it probably wasn't going to happen, but now you've got the national debt skyrocketing. You have state and local municipalities are strapped. They're looking for revenue wherever they can. Uh, you know, and, and it's really uh, starting to perk up again. Um, we haven't even talked about this idea that New Jersey and, and maybe New York would put a tax on transactions processed within their state. And I'm sure everybody here knows that most uh, transactions are processed in New Jersey these days. Uh, but of course, every time they mention that, the exchanges say, well, if you do that, we're moving to Texas or Florida or, you know, wherever. And, and so, uh, you know, something else to, to keep in mind is that Although people tend to think of Republicans as being opposed to, to new taxes, even some very powerful Democrats have opposed an FDT in the past, uh, most notably Senate, now Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Um, look, I'm not really good at reading the political tea leaves, but it doesn't take a genius to see that a financial transaction tax can become a political football. You got progressives like Sanders and Warren arguing for it. You have moderates like Schumer against it. And that's just that's just on the Democratic side. Who knows where the Republicans are going to be on it? It's going to be an interesting fight. But the one big point you made, too, is that the revenue that they're projecting to make from this would probably be substantially less, less, especially if they did not give a market maker exemption, because it's going to be a lot less trading. I mean, you're not going to be jumping into stock trying to make 20 cents on this, 20 cents on that. You know, 0.1% in, 0.1% out on Tesla is 0.2%. So, you know, it's seven bucks. You know, you're talking about you know, have to make like a buck and a half on Tesla to break even. So, well, I mean, you're not going to have those scalpers jumping in for 50 cents. The number, so I haven't been looking at the point one because I, I think that the point one that's out there now probably has less of a chance than Bernie Sanders' point five. Well, that's even like that blows every point five sounds insane. So, so let me just throw out, let me just throw out some numbers on point five. So you trade Amazon, that's sixteen dollars a share, oh. sixteen bucks a share on Amazon. Google, eleven bucks a share. Chipotle, eight bucks a share. Even for lower price stocks, you know, GameStop uh, at a hundred bucks, fifty-two dollars for a hundred shares. Uh, you know, oh, so, yeah. so this is you know, individual traders should really be uh, concerned about this. But let me point out, actually, the, the bigger uh, and maybe more insidious hit that's going to be taken is really on the part of pension funds, especially these huge public pension funds. They're the big users of the market. Um, I looked at CalPERS a while ago and did the calculations based on how much turnover CalPERS has and so on. It comes out to like $650 million a year for CalPERS. <laughs> New York City, public pension funds, teachers, cops, firefighters, $1.3 billion a year. And in tax. And, for, in tax. and state of New Jersey, which their pension funds already underwater, as people who live there know, 190 to 200 million bucks a year. And, and remember, these are defined benefit plans. So the plans have to pay out no matter what. Somebody's going to have to rescue them and, and make up this tax money. It'll be the general taxpayer. So 
they're going to get hit really hard. Um, I, you know, and I think that's that's really a problem here. Wait, just so whoever doesn't know, CalPERS is the largest pension fund in the country. It's the California Public Employee Retirement System. It's the largest pension fund in in the U.S. Just so yeah, and, 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 and one of the biggest users of the market. They yeah. trade a, an amazing amount. People forget that these big pension funds, every time there's money coming in from a payroll deduction or every time they have to pay out to pay benefits, they trade. And so, uh, you know, we forget about that. Now, people come up to me and they say, well, okay, what if we just made an exemption for the pension fund? Or let's make an exemption for the market maker. So, and by the time you get finished with all the exemptions, the only people left to pay are the people who are watching this call. So, yeah, uh, yeah you, the, li- yeah. the listeners to this call, the retail traders would be the ones paying the bell. I mean, exactly. we worked so hard to get zero commissions. We've worked, you know, for 20 years to bring commissions. Think about back in the 80s and you were paying, you know, $200 to buy and sell your stock. I mean, we've brought this down. Robinhood, you know, we've got free commissions. People can trade for free. Something like this undoes all of that. I mean, we go right back to the 1990s where you're, you're basically paying full-size commissions again, you know, when you think about it. So, um, you know, it, 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 what it does to the retail brokerage industry, I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, it, 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 it would certainly change the game a lot. Um, and, and I think for people that are trying to save for retirement, that have an IRA invested in the market, it would, it would really hurt them a lot. Remember, if, if you're invested in a mutual fund, the mutual fund is going to pay the tax also. <laughs> so, so, you know, it, 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 it's really kind of insidious. We're on the line with Bill Hartz, former CEO of Modern Markets Initiative, joining us here a couple times over the last few weeks to talk about uh, market structure. Bill, we really appreciate it. Uh, my question, so just for clarity, this is going to be everything, right? We're, we're talking stocks, but it's going to be bonds. It's going to be fixed income. It's going to be futures. It's going to be it's going to be everything, right? Exactly. Um, oh, and, and, man. And, and I mean, options and yeah, exactly. Oh, convertibles, really everything. And uh, uh, it, it could be a mess. I mean, it's um, <laughs> it, it could generate revenue, but it, it will be regressive that people will change their behavior. And so less revenue will actually come in from it. Could you imagine like, let's say they do it and they pass it and they have some, you know, it, while market maker exemptions or whatever, could you imagine that first day of trading when it go? You know, like let's say they instituted for you know 2022. Can you imagine that the chaos in the markets? Did any of these regulators look at market structure? Do they have any idea? What I think the regulators know? do. It's just I don't know if the house members do. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, let's. Oh, yeah, I met, I met the house. Yeah, I know. What yeah, you're yeah. I mean, look. I, I mean, you. I'm sure you guys watched that that House committee meeting last week. Um, a lot of those Congress people were out for blood. I don't think many of them really understood the way markets work today. Um, but you know, and some people would say it's grandstanding or whatever. Look, those people are very powerful, and uh, you know, they want to show people that they're doing something about. Uh, Wall Street bets or GameStop or Robinhood or whoever the boogeyman is today. And that's the scary thought if you have people making the rules that don't totally understand how the game is played. 